Hello, Danny. Danny Phantom's a cartoon, okay? Just because your name's Danny doesn't mean you can walk through walls, okay? <laughs> Chill out. You guys like snot? Puss? Poop? Perhaps? Well, I have got the movie for you. Osmosis Jones. What? It's Peter Jones. No, I said Osmosis Jones, not Peter Jones. Oh, what do you mean? My name's Peter Jones. All right, so I'm just gonna assume that you just think that you're the only person on the planet with the name Jones. Is that right? Well, what do you mean? Yeah, it's my family name. We've kept our bloodline pure for many generations. We even have our own convenience store called Jones and stuff. By keeping the bloodline pure, does that Incest. mean- Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, that's just a story for another day, but okay, you know that there's plenty of people in the world with the names Jones, right? I know what I must do. Peter, please don't tell me that you're going to go through the process of changing every person's legal name that has Jones into something else just so you can make sure that you're the only family with the name Jones. <laughs> what? No, I was just going to threaten them with this hammer. A hammer. You're just going to just going to threaten every single person with the name Jones with a hammer. Where the hell did you even get that hammer? Uh, Jones and stuff. Out. Get out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Osmosis Jones, a movie taking place inside the human body where cells are sentient beings. And we follow a white blood cell named Osmosis Jones. And I know this already sounds fun, quirky cartoon, you know, but as a boy, let me tell you something. This movie nasty. This, this movie's gross, dude. Now, I don't know about you guys, but like pus and snot, zits, like all that stuff, it, it's gross. I mean, to me, it, it's gross. And boy, does this movie have that in droves. My man, Bill Murray, did an insane job at making me feel disgusted throughout this entire movie. I honestly pushed off reviewing this movie for a while because of a certain scene that many of you who have watched it probably know what I'm talking about because there's a scene in here that haunts me to this day. Because you see, I'm what the cool kids call a giant fucking pussy. And on top of the grotesqueness, I guess you could say of this movie, this it's slightly gory too, which is interesting. I mean, obviously a movie that takes place inside of someone's body technically is always gory, but it kind of has that armor of since they're not real people, since they are just cells, they're blood cells, white blood cells, all these different things, technically it's not really gory. You know, technically watching someone's eyeballs blood pop out of their eyes and their body like bubble and explode it, it's not real it's just not it's not a person so it doesn't count didn't really like it then don't really like it now but let's watch it anyway the movie starts out with bill murray playing frank and he is with his daughter and frank is a zookeeper and right off the bat they just go straight to making him just an unhealthy grotesque human i mean they start out by him itching his ass he starts spraying mayo and a shit ton of salt on just an egg which i mean who just packs a boiled egg for lunch like i know they're just trying to make him gross but legitimately just like give him like a, a freaking candy bar or something, you know, he's supposed to be unhealthy, not gross. Not only that, but he starts telling his daughter that him and her mother uh, kind of fed her cheeseburgers when she was a baby and now her cholesterol is high. Cheeseburgers as a baby. And look at you. You're as big as a house. Your cholesterol's probably a little high, but you know, they have medicine for that night. So I think right off the bat, we kind of laid the ground that Frank's kind of a gross. Oh, don't. Don't you dare eat that egg. Oh, God. It's the ground, you pick it up within 10 seconds, you can eat it. Hello, everyone. It's just me, the doctor. Now, I just wanted to say, dropping an egg onto a monkey's cage's floor probably full of a bunch of fecal matter is what us in the community... Com is what us in the community call gross. But what I would recommend for everyone to eat is some magic spoon cereal. Now, when I was a young boy, I used to wake up every single morning and eat a bowl of cereal, almost every single morning. And then when I got older, I realized, wow, this is bad for my body. And then I found magic spoon. And my life has been a thousand times better. Oh, it looks so good. Mm. Yeah. 
That's some good cereal. I've started dating more women. Dogecoin has gone up. Many things have been better in my life ever since I got magic spoon. Oh, well, well, let's see what all the buzz is about, right? We have zero grams of sugar, right? Uh, 14 grams of protein and uh, four net grams of carbs. I mean, it can't get better than that. And they have amazing flavors such as cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. And you can get all of those in a nice little variety pack. Now, as an adult, you can enjoy the same things you enjoyed as a child and grasp onto that idea that maybe you aren't getting closer to death every single day. You are. Not to mention this is keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and non-GMO. So what are you doing? Click the link down below, go to magicspoon.com slash bionic, get $5 off your variety pack order, and just enjoy life. Trust me. I am a doctor. So this is how the journey starts. We zoom in into Frank's mouth and we meet Osmosis Jones, who's a white blood cell, which in this universe is like the equivalent of a cop, I guess. And as we are shown in the beginning, he doesn't really listen to anyone's orders, which end up getting him in trouble. And he ends up kind of messing stuff up. But I could get him. I said stay put. Over. <laughs> And right here, he ends up causing a giant muscle cramp or a seizure. It's kind of hard to tell which one that is. So then we cut straight to the gore. We see these two guys are cleaning up the egg that Frank ate earlier. Then we run into the antagonist of the movie. And boy, he, he kind of just massacres these guys. Hey, <laughs> Party? I'm contagious. Ow. And I'll be honest, they did a pretty good job at how they treated the whole city aspect of the movie. Because the city is run by a corrupt mayor, and apparently the mayor basically controls everything. And the reason Frank is so unhealthy is because the mayor wants to make more room in order to build more buildings for more money. He just wants to make them fatter so they can make more money. Mr. Mayor, do you have a plan to deal with the fat cell housing shortage? I'd like to announce we're beginning construction on a <laughs> third chin. It's funny because he even has someone who's campaigning against him who's all about change. I'm sure we could start kind of seeing some parallels here, you know? Tom Kalanick. As mayor, I would set long-term goals that include ordering salads and eating bran. Mr. Kalanick, what's that smell? <laughs> Why, that's the smell of change, Billy. So Frank sucks down a chicken leg and his throat starts hurting from it. Adds up. Chicken going down rough. Chicken going down rough. So his daughter wants to take him to the doctor. But apparently the mayor has the power to override Frank's own thoughts and um, tell him that he doesn't want to go to the doctor and he's going to take a cold pill instead. Yes, my dear. Voice, Voice manual, manual control, control on. on. Second, second thought. thought. On second thought. Perhaps I'll take a cold because the mayor thinks the disease is fake news and that'll be gone before you know it. Did this predict the future? We cut to Osmosis Jones. He's getting yelled at from his boss and for some weird reason, his boss gives him a job even though he just got in trouble. It, this part never really made much sense to me, but he sends him to oversee the cold pill that Frank took. Oh yeah, also he sees Leia and starts aggressively hitting on her. Like very, very like in her face hitting on her. What are you and me gonna hook up? I know this little spot right behind the eye has the perfect view. Perfect for a little rendezvous. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I've been saying it a long time. Yeah. But anyway, Drix shows up and he's the cold pill that Frank took and him and Osmosis start partnering up. Drixo Benzo Metaphedramine. Back to the real world, we meet Frank's friend, who's kind of the exact same as Frank. He's just a disgusting, unhealthy guy. Boy. Uh-huh. Oh, man. I am so psyched for this long weekend. <laughs> I'm just gonna wheel a keg into the living room and plop myself down on the sofa in front of the TV. And Frank smells like shit. Let's zoom into his armpit. Zoom, zoom, woo. <laughs>
My life's falling apart before me. And in his armpit, we see basically kind of like a mafia version of germs, and they're using Frank's armpit as a sauna. And honestly, I appreciate kind of how they're pretty creative with how they're using this stuff inside Frank's body and to relate to stuff into our world. Oh yeah, something I found interesting. The antagonist Thrax calls himself the Red Death, and he proceeds to literally massacre everyone in there, and the rest of the people who live becomes his followers. You ain't so tough. <laughs> it's a goddamn germ bath. I was gonna say blood bath, but tech technically they're not blood, they're germs, so they would green blood? I I don't what would that be? I don't know. Bacteria bath? I, I don't know. But anyway, something interesting about this. This villain was based off the Red Death disease created by Edgar Allan Poe. A fictitious disease that apparently causes sharp pains, sudden dizziness, and profuse bleeding from every pore that leads to death within a half an hour. Imagine choosing a fictitious disease written by Edgar Allan Poe, of all people, and just toss it into a kid's movie. Not only that, but his name is Thrax, so could be a reference to Anthrax, but that's not what he is. He, he said he's Red Death, not Anthrax. And also, his entire goal in this movie is to kill him uh, within the day. So, it it's... Pretty dark. Oh yeah, something that isn't really referenced much in the movie, but you kind of figure out after you watch it a few times. Um, he killed Frank's wife. Like like the red death that he is, uh, apparently he's the one who killed Frank's wife. So, he don't miss, you know? Like, he don't miss. That was nothing. Frank's daughter asks if he can go on a field trip with her and her class, but he doesn't want to because of a certain incident he had with the teacher that we're going to get to later. That is quite gross. So Osmosis and Drix are going around fixing the irritation in his throat, you know, around his nose, all that different stuff. Frank sneezes, then gives someone a high five. Just gross. Gross. Don't ever do that. Don't sneeze and hide. Just Gross. May, I don't, am, am I a germaphobe? Does this just show that I'm a germaphobe? I don't even know if I am. This just makes me nauseous. But anyway, Thrax got to the nose and made the nose dam crack, which not really sure what the dam is supposed to be in terms of like human anatomy. They mentioned it was cartilage. I, I, mean, I don't think it's like the middle piece of cartilage that because that would be weird if it just broke when you had a runny nose. But uh, anyway, Drix ends up stopping the dam and Osmosis sees Thrax. Wait a minute! What? So this mayor thing just gets funnier every time. So the mayor has a speech about the whole runny nose incident and starts fear-mongering everyone and saying that exercise, low fat, and diet are just buzzwords to scare people into voting for the other party. Man, I am really starting to think that Osmosis Jones predicted our political future somehow. Thrown around a lot of fancy words to try to confuse the issues. Words like exercise, low fat, and diet. And not only that, but he is forcing Frank to go to a wing event in Buffalo, New York, and literally shows Frank's love handles as the fastest growing community. These parallels are amazing. I'm not going to lie. I love it. But anyway, Osmosis and Drix gets to shake hands with the mayor for stopping uh, the, the, the nose situation that was going on. And no one believes that Osmosis saw a virus in the nose until Drix just decides to believe it. Like, it's kind of weird because they, like, fight. Like, no, you didn't see it. You're stupid. It's your fault that the nose is running. And he's like, no, I saw it. And then they fight for, like, literally two seconds. And then within the next scene, he's like, oh, I believe you. Yeah, you're right. There's probably someone there. Oh, sir, don't listen to Jones. His diagnostic skills are remedial at best. You're the little cherry assman who iced a key witness to a viral that attack. Was an accident. Yeah. I think I'll stay with Jones. But anyway, Drix goes with him to help him figure out if uh, the virus is real. And also we find out why Osmosis is so hated and also why the teacher hates Frank. A while back, Frank was at his daughter's science fair and was looking around at some science stuff and saw a kid who was testing if he could take the pollution out of polluted oysters. And then Frank asks, Can you eat them? Hello everyone again, it is me, the doctor. Now from this alone we could kind of see that frank is suffering from 
major stupidity. What, what, a, what, a, what, an, what an idiot. What a stupid freaking person. Like, how, how stupid, what an idiot. Dumb. Absolutely brain dead. Thank you. I am the doctor. So Shane's teacher starts flirting with Frank. <laughs> And while this is happening, Osmosis sees a bad virus on top of that oyster. So naturally, he of force evacuates all of the stomach juice inside of him all over Shane's teacher. So now we know why Frank doesn't want to be around her. Oh, yeah. And just a little note. Uh, you think that's the grossest thing Frank has done to the teacher or I should say will do to the teacher? Oh, boy. We haven't even got there yet. Oh, baby. We haven't even got there yet. Oh, great. A gross toe. Don't you just want to suck it? Don't you just want to suck on that toe? Don't you? So they go around and find information about this virus, and they run into a vaccination. And I find this part hilarious because in this world, the vaccination is basically the equivalent of a rat or someone who rats on other people or snitches on other people. And it's kind of hilarious how they portray that. I was injected into this body to rat on influenza only. And this don't sound like influenza to me. Just imagine every vaccination as just a snitch on other viruses in your body. Hey, what? But anyway, they scare the vaccine in order to tell them where Thrax is located, and then they go to find it. And this part confuses me a little bit because how they portray the zit, because uh, this is where the gross part comes in. So the zit is like a club in this universe, which doesn't make sense because zits come and go within a few days. So maybe it's because of the rarity of zits that they make it into clubs because it's like exclusive or something. I don't know. It The parallel doesn't make much sense with the zit. But anyway, they go inside of the zit to figure out where Thrax is. And after a little bit of cringe from Kid Rock. You know I got that gangster in me. God, that's terrible. Somehow Osmosis Jones makes it into a meeting room of a bunch of viruses and meets Thrax. And this is where the grossest part of the movie comes in. Not exaggerating, I had to skip this part uh, every time. Every time I watch it, I have to skip it. And just thinking about how I have to edit this part makes me nauseous. Who knows, maybe it's not that gross to you guys, but it's gross to me, okay? So Frank ends up going to Shane's teacher in order to ask her if she can make an exception for him to go on the trip with her. And who does this? Who leaves a ginormous zit with that big of a white head just chilling on your forehead? You don't just leave it. You don't just leave it, okay? The situation shouldn't have occurred. Within seconds, Osmosis loses his cover, and then Drix comes in and basically nukes the entire zit, which leads to, once again, one of the grossest parts of this movie that I don't like watching. You have something white on your lips. Uh, ew! Get out! Frank's zit forcibly pops and the pus flies on to Shane's teacher's lip. Ugh. Just saying that makes me nauseous. I hate it. God, I hate it so much. Leave in the comments below. Am I a pussy? <laughs> I need to know. Is it just me? Was this part that gross for you guys? Because this haunts me. This haunts me, okay? Oh yeah, not only that, but after Drix nukes the entire zit, Thrax somehow gets away from it. So, yeah, he's still going to be a problem. So since Osmosis and Drix forcibly uh, forced out said pimple, Osmosis ends up getting fired by the mayor. But not only that, but the mayor shit talks Drix a little bit and tells him to get out of his body. Popping a pimple without a permit? Well, here's a thought. You're fired. You're nothing but a wannabe, a placebo, a generic brand, marked down, over-the-counter, useless, so then Shane gets a little bit mad at Frank and says, yo, I ain't going to Buffalo. Also, she drops a fat bomb on him, says, yo, maybe if you and mom ate better, mom would still be around. Boom. Bomb dropped. Get fucked, Frank. So while Osmosis is walking the lonely road and Drix is going to get pissed out, Thrax goes to the hypothalamus and gives Frank a fat fever. So Osmosis notices that Frank's temperature is going up, so he goes to get Drix to, you know, make sure he doesn't get pissed. Get it? Pissed? Because Frank's going to piss him out? Pissed? I, God, I am... 
I'm sorry. I am I'm very sorry. So in the real world, while Frank is having a fever, his friend comes over and gives him, you know, a fat beer and tells him to chug it down. Drown the flu. There you go. Your body needs fluids now, and lots of them. Oh, of course it's fluid. What about all that wet stuff in it? Because that's basically God's nectar and kills all common illnesses. Let's be real. There you go. You look good with full. <laughs> you put the freaking eyelash on her eyelid. Oh, what, it looks like an idiot. She looks stupid. You gotta you know, put it like on the eyelash, you idiot. You idiot, it's on the eyelid. God, stupid kids. But anyway, inside Frank's body, Thrax ends up yoinking Leia and then goes into a high speed chase. <laughs> While at the same time, Frank's friend is talking about, you know, if Frank dies, at least he will take care of his daughter. So, <laughs> what a good friend. If anything ever happens to you, I will take care of her, okay? I will raise her, I will nurture her, I will love her, and then when she's 16, I'll boot her out the door. And somehow, miraculously, in some wicked twist, it seems like Shane's bus was passing by while Frank was being put into an ambulance. I, I don't understand how they were going on the same path, but we're not going to talk about that. But anyway, Shane and Frank's friend end up going to the hospital with Frank. Hey. Oh, sure. No, he's going to be fine. No, no. <laughs> I hope he's going to be okay. <laughs> so Drix and Osmosis catches up with Thrax and yoinks Leia away, and then Drix freezes his fiery hot fingernail, I, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> but Thrax ends up getting away by throwing dust into his esophagus and, and then he sneezes Thrax out. But Osmosis being the badass that he is, gets sucked inside of Drix's gun arm and then shoots him out. Fight on top, and then they have a little fight on top of Shane's fake eyelash. Thrax gets his giant red fingernail hot thing stuck in her fake eyelash, falls into a fiery pit of alcohol and dies. <laughs> so Frank ends up coming back from the dead, tells Shane that her mom says hi, we all live happily ever after, and now that image of his pimple popping into her mouth will be stuck in your heads for your entire lives. It's gonna be there, just in the back, floating, waiting for that one moment when you're alone at night thinking, oh man, remember that Osmosis Jones movie? Oh! Oh, oh! oh God! Oh! Oh! Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Osmosis Jones. Honestly, the movie isn't that bad. Honestly, the movie's pretty good. Like, it's like medium range, you know? It's like six out of ten-ish, you know what I mean? Honestly, if it wasn't so gross, if there wasn't all those gross things in there, it would it would be more entertaining of a movie, you know? But once again, you know, I'm what the cool kids call a, a, a little pussy, you know? I don't like gross things. Call me whatever you want. I don't care. But thank you all for watching. Oh, what's that? You enjoy this shirt. You like this shirt. You want to buy this shirt. Well, go to sadgirlapparel.com. Go there. Buy the gosh darn shirt and many more. There's plenty of other things you could buy there at sagroapparel.com. So make sure to go check that out. Also subscribe if you like the channel. Also like if you like the channel because that's what you do when you like something. You like it. I, I, you just get the blue thumbs up. It's not much happens after that. You just click it. Um, <clears throat> but, bye.